Hey, fellow gardeners and farming enthusiasts, imagine doubling your harvest while using the same amount of land, reducing pest problems naturally, and creating a thriving ecosystem right in your garden beds. That's not garden magic. It's intercropping, one of agriculture's oldest and most brilliant techniques that's making a massive comeback in sustainable farming. Whether you're tending to a small backyard plot or managing acres of farmland, this age-old practice could be the game changer you've been looking for. In today's video, we're breaking down everything you need to know about intercropping in four simple parts. First, we'll explore what intercropping actually is and why it's become so relevant today. Next, we'll dive into the five major intercropping systems and how each one works. In the third segment, we'll look at the impressive benefits that make intercropping worth trying. And finally, we'll give you practical steps to implement intercropping in your own garden or farm, complete with winning plant combinations that are proven to thrive together. By the end, you'll have all the knowledge you need to start your intercropping journey. Part 1. What is intercropping? So what exactly is intercropping? Simply put, intercropping is the practice of growing two or more crops in the same field or garden bed at the same time. It's essentially companion planting taken to the next level, with an emphasis on maximizing space and creating beneficial relationships between plants. This isn't a new concept. Farmers across the globe have been intercropping for thousands of years. In fact, Native Americans famously used the Three Sisters method of growing corn, beans, and squash, together long before European settlers arrived. The corn provides a natural trellis for the beans to climb. The beans fix nitrogen in the soil that feeds the corn and squash, and the squash leaves shade the ground, suppressing weeds and retaining moisture. What makes intercropping different from modern monocropping, growing just one crop in a field? is its focus on plant diversity and the intentional design of plant communities. Rather than seeing plants as isolated individuals, intercropping recognizes that plants interact with each other and can form mutually beneficial relationships, just like in natural ecosystems. Recent research has shown that intercropping systems can produce up to 1.7 times more yield than monocultures on the same amount of land. That's because when we choose the right plant combinations, they actually help each other grow better than they would alone. Think of it as creating a plant community where each member plays a specific role in supporting the others. Part 2. The Five Major Intercropping Systems Now that we understand what intercropping is, let's look at the five main approaches you can use. Row intercropping. This is probably the most straightforward method, where you plant different crops in alternating rows. For example, you might have a row of tomatoes, then a row of basil, then another row of tomatoes. This organized approach makes it easier to harvest and maintain your crops while still getting the benefits of diversity. It's perfect for farmers who use machinery, but still want to practice intercropping. Strip intercropping. Similar to row intercropping, but on a larger scale, strip intercropping involves planting multiple rows of one crop alongside multiple rows of another. For instance, you might have four rows of corn next to four rows of soybeans. This approach is particularly popular in larger farming operations because it accommodates mechanical harvesting while still providing ecological benefits. Mixed intercropping. This is the most diverse approach, where different crops are completely intermixed with no distinct row arrangement. It most closely mimics natural ecosystems and is often used in permaculture gardens. While it can be more challenging to harvest, it maximizes beneficial plant interactions and can be extremely productive in smaller spaces. Relay intercropping. This time-based approach involves planting a second crop into a standing crop that's nearing maturity but not yet harvested. For example, you might sow winter wheat between rows of soybeans in late summer. By the time you harvest the soybeans, the wheat is established and continues growing through winter. This clever system maximizes your growing season and keeps the soil covered year-round. Temporal intercropping. This involves planting fast-growing crops between slower-growing ones. The quick-growing crops are harvested before they start competing with the main crop. A classic example is planting radishes between cabbage plants. The radishes are harvested long before the cabbage needs the extra space. 
The beauty of these systems is their flexibility. You can adapt them to your specific needs, whether you're working with a small raised bed or several acres. The key is understanding which approach works best for your situation and the specific plants you want to grow. Part 3. The Remarkable Benefits of Intercropping Now, let's talk about why you should consider intercropping. The benefits go far beyond just squeezing more plants into your garden. Increased Yield and Land Efficiency One of the most compelling reasons to try intercropping is simple economics. You can grow more food in the same amount of space. Recent studies have shown yield increases of 20 to 60 percent compared to monocultures. This is due to what scientists call the complementarity effect, where plants use resources differently, accessing nutrients and sunlight in ways that don't compete with each other. Natural Pest Management Diversity is the enemy of pests. When you mix crops, you create confusion for insects that are looking for their host plants. The aromatic compounds from certain plants can mask the scent of their companions, making them harder for pests to locate. For example, planting aromatic herbs like basil near tomatoes can reduce tomato hornworm infestations by up to 40%. Improved soil health. Different plants interact with soil in different ways. Some, like legumes, fix nitrogen from the air into the soil. Others, like daikon radishes, have deep roots that break up compacted soil. By combining plants with different root structures and nutrient needs, you create a more balanced soil ecosystem. Research has shown that intercropping with legumes can reduce fertilizer needs by up to 30%. Reduced Weed Pressure a dense, diverse planting leaves little room or light for weeds to establish. When plants of different heights, growth habits, and leaf structures are combined, they create a living mulch that naturally suppresses weed growth. Studies have found that well-designed intercropping systems can reduce weed biomass by up to 50% compared to monocultures. Climate Resilience In an era of climate uncertainty, having diversity in your garden creates insurance. If one crop struggles due to unusual weather patterns, others might thrive, ensuring you still get a harvest. Plus, the improved soil structure from intercropping helps lands better absorb and retain water, reducing both erosion during heavy rains and drought stress during dry periods. Enhanced biodiversity. Beyond your crops, intercropping supports more beneficial insects, pollinators, and soil microorganisms. This creates a more stable ecosystem that's less prone to pest outbreaks and disease. Recent research has found that intercropped fields support up to three times more beneficial insect species than monocultures. With these impressive benefits, it's no wonder that both small-scale gardeners and commercial farmers are increasingly adopting intercropping practices. Part 4. Implementing intercropping in your garden or farm. Now for the practical part. How do you actually get started with intercropping? Here's your step-by-step -step guide. Step 1. Know your plants. The foundation of successful intercropping is understanding which plants grow well together. Consider these factors. Growth patterns. Pair tall plants with shorter ones that can thrive in partial shade. Root systems. Combine shallow-rooted plants with deep-rooted ones. Nutrient needs. Pair heavy feeders with light feeders or soil builders. Timing. Match plants that mature at different times. Step 2. Start small. Don't feel like you need to convert your entire garden at once. Begin with a single better section and expand as you gain confidence. This gives you a chance to observe what works in your specific growing conditions. Step 3. Choose your system. Based on your space and goals, Select which intercropping system makes the most sense for you. Remember the five types we discussed earlier. Row, strip, mixed, relay, and temporal intercropping. Each has its advantages depending on your situation. Step 4. Plan your layout. Once you've selected compatible plants and your system, sketch out your planting plan. Consider spacing carefully. While you can plant more densely with intercropping, Plants still need adequate room to grow. A general rule is to space plants about 25% closer than you would in a monoculture. 
Step 5. Implement and observe. After planting, pay close attention to how your plants interact. Keep a garden journal to note what combinations work well and which ones might need adjusting next season. Intercropping is as much art as science, and your observations will be invaluable. Winning plant combinations to try. Let me share some tried and true intercropping combinations that work wonderfully together. The three sisters, corn, beans, and squash, a time-tested Native American combination. Plant corn first, then beans when corn is six inches tall, then squash when beans begin to climb. Tomatoes, basil, and carrots. Basil repels tomato hornworms and improves tomato flavor, while carrots use a different soil layer and thrive in the partial shade of tomato plants. Cabbage and aromatic herbs. Plant dill, sage, thyme, or mint between cabbage plants to confuse and repel cabbage moths and loopers. Lettuce and taller vegetables. Quick-growing lettuce can be planted between peppers, broccoli, or eggplants providing a harvest before the taller plants need the space. Alliums and carrots. Onions, garlic, and leeks planted alongside carrots help deter carrot flies with their strong scent. Remember that what works in one climate or soil type might not work in another, so be prepared to experiment and adapt these combinations to your specific conditions. Intercropping represents a return to agricultural wisdom that works with nature rather than against it. By mimicking the diversity found in natural ecosystems, we can create gardens and farms that are more productive, resilient, and sustainable. Whether you're looking to maximize your harvest from a small space, reduce pest problems without chemicals, improve your soil naturally, or simply create a more beautiful and functional garden, intercropping offers compelling benefits. I hope this video has inspired you to try intercropping in your own growing space. Start small, observe closely, and don't be afraid to experiment. Nature thrives on diversity, and your garden can too. If you found this information helpful, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for more sustainable gardening and farming tips. Drop a comment below sharing your own intercropping experiences or questions. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, happy growing.